I, I curated a, a show there that I thought was really, um, was really interesting. Um, it was before I actually worked there, um, when Karen was still alive. And it was a show, three woman show of assemblage based work, installation based show. And I think it was probably one of the first shows they had at the time, had in the gallery of that work that was just about that. So we each did an installation. It was myself, Diane Gamboa, and Karen Von Figley was a third artist. And um, that was just really interesting just to see this work, which was not, you know, it was more conceptual and it wasn't, you know, it was very different and to just see the kind of reactions that we got out of that, um, that was interesting. I also had a, a, I was part of another group. Um, we had an artist, uh, her name was Tomi Arai and she uh, was, there was this national uh, program of artists in residence, each state got, it was, a associated with the National Endowment for the Arts and um, the California residency went to self Up Graphics. And so she came and there was a group of artists and we all worked together and did an installation and it was based on identity and we had to collaborate conceptually on what we were doing and as an overall theme for the installation and then our individual works within that. And that as an artist um, was just a, a really great opportunity and experience that I, I really enjoyed that. I mean, that's one of the things I think people really don't understand so much. I mean, well, maybe they do now, but just me seeing it during that time working with Tomas is the level of the, the collaborations that self-help had with um, other arts organizations in the city, nationally and internationally. I mean, we were, we were it. I mean, if, if you were an, an organization and you wanted to connect to the Chicano Latino community, you went to self-help graphics. And we had, we had collaborations, we had exchanges, we had, you know, events, we had connection, we had everyone there. We went everywhere. And I, and I cannot say how important that was for me when I was working there to go to all these meetings. I mean, Tomas, I knew, was always, you know, he was the guy with the vision, he was the boss, and, and um, but I definitely, you know, he, he was the, the, had the big vision, but I was the person, like, when it came down to the nuts and bolts administration of things, I, that's what I did. And so it was like, we worked as a team. And for me to have that experience, just being in those meetings and seeing how these ideas and these collaborations were formed and exchanging ideas and, and all of that, you can't buy that experience. I mean, that was, that right there was worth, you know, that was a graduate degree in, in administration and community collaboration and all of that. And, and the connections I made and the seasoning I got as an administrator I use that every day in the job that I have now. I mean, it was amazing opportunity. And then also just working with Tomas because here we were in this organization that was already legendary. And then they had Sister Karen, who was just this amazing, amazing woman, founder, director, and then just suddenly she's gone. And then the organization had this identity question within, like, well, what are we going to do now? Who's going to run? How are we going to run? What are, what are we going to be about? I mean, that was, that was a crisis of, of identity as an organization. And so we went through this whole organizational assessment program process that um, I wrote a grant for. I wrote all the grants at this point. I was a grant writer. But... Of course, it was Tomas's, you know, vision, and we sort of worked together, and like, we want to do this or not, and we're like, yeah, we really need to do this. And so, um, we got the funding to have a, um, a Lee Draper and Associates came in, consultants, and they did an in-depth organizational assessment with us, where they went out and they interviewed all these constituents, artists, just the general arts community, community members. Um, the board, it was just a 
the staff. It was this overall, like inside out, like examine everything and like how are we going to be and you know what's the path going to be, what's the vision going to be, what's going to be important. It was, it was great. It was a really good time and and I had the most amazing conversations with Tomas and we would always you know like we're doing this and at the same time there's these this collaboration would happen with with England or. Or we would have this other thing going on with this organization across town or, you know, this other thing. And it's like, well, do we want to do this? Or, you know, look what's happening over here. Do we really, you know, and then we would like discuss it. And then sometimes we'd argue about it, you know. But it was, it was really great because it's like going to this place, it's like we're like in this pressure cooker and you're like ground zero for this amazing thing in this amazing community and, and, getting this word out about who we were and you know just being able to sort of help have that to formulate that and to like you know question back and forth and and it was really I think one of the the more unique um, sort of working relationships I've ever had because I always knew it as Tomas said if there's a tie he wins and it's true I always knew that if there's a tie he wins but he let me like, you know, like like pick and push and you know. But he, you know, but he really sort of welcomed it because it's like I came from one place that was very different from where he came from, and it really made the program stronger in the end. And um, he was. It takes a really strong leader to be able to to foster that conversation and be like okay with having somebody come in and say well what about this thing and what about that and why are we doing it this way so and then you know generally he was right you know I have to say you know but it was it was an it was a tremendous experience